Shalom, welcome to the Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Delmar, together with my co-host, Mark Ronich, the statewide news service, jbiztechphilly.com, and now columnist for the Jewish Press. Right, and I'm having a lot of fun with all three assignments, Rabbi. I have uh, a column in the Jewish Press called Albany Beat, where I... Uh, talk about how government relates to the Jewish community, or doesn't, as the case may be. But our guest today is a Holocaust survivor, mm -hmm. an artist, and, uh, and a scientist. His name's Tibor Spitz. He came up here all the way from Kingston. So welcome to the Jewish View, Tibor. Thank you very well, you much. You talk about and Jewish community not getting along with the Jewish people, you know, government. Well, yeah. And I mean, that's... The ultimate, ultimate is uh, the ultimate Holocaust. Idea is the Holocaust. But T, you know, so so Tibor has a PhD in glass and ceramic engineering. Mm, very well. Uh, ceramic engineering. And yeah. uh, you're an inventor, and you're an author of many patents and publications. A motivational lecturer on many subjects. International published artist in several media. Correct. So you're very talented, and we're very very they, they grateful to have you here. They used to call me a Renaissance man. Oh, oh, yeah. Anyway, but why don't you start from the beginning? Where were uh -oh. you born? And, I mean, it's it's going to be a long story, and we have a half hour, but it's very, very interesting. Tell us all about your childhood, and obviously how it leads into the Holocaust. My <coughs> my parents married in started uh, Bene Barak. It was nothing there except sand and some Arab, small Arab village. In Israel? Uh, in Israel. And my first sister died. Nobody knew why. A Kabbalist came and said uh, it was a reincarnation or Gilgul of a soul of a grand, my mother's grandfather who wanted to die in the Holy Land and ended up in the child and so on. Which means that she said in one year you will have a genius son really? he will save your life it was my brother i came already when my father had to leave palestine very ill they told him that he would live a few weeks in case he would not he, he did not go to europe for medical uh, treatment and uh, i was born as a second son in a small village of slovakia in the mountains what year uh, 1929, which makes me 87. So it's like you uh, till 120. I try, but most it's hard work to feel 30 at 87, but I do. And the small town was named Dolny Kubin, D-O-L-N-Y-K-U-B-I-N. Yes. Yeah. It, it was a very small town, about 2,600 people and about 270 Jews. And it's in the high mountains of northern Very Slovakia. Very high yeah. mountains in Slovakia, close to Polish border, which were such a high mountains that we could see snow on peaks, mountain peaks, practically all year long. Mm. It was so high that it never melted. And your father was a chazan? And my father became a chazan because he spoke... You should say cantor for right. people who don't understand. The cantor of a the synagogue. The cantor of a synagogue, but he was in charge of many more duties than an American or Canadian rabbi because he was also shochet, except... Uh, just so to explain for the people, for yeah. just translating for you, a shochet is a ritual slaughter that makes yeah. the animals kosher. Yes. And, uh, Moel he, is a circumciser yeah, for baby except, boys. Except Mohel, he was not. Oh, he but wasn't. all other duties, because it was a small community high in the mountains. So really, he was a cantor, but he was like a rabbi. Yeah, the, and it was three times a day, or at least twice a day, uh, services, uh, reading Torah on Shabbat and holidays. And uh, this is the education I have received. Uh, so you had a good Jewish uh, education when you were young. It was a good Jewish education as well as in elementary school and non-Jewish education. It, th we are not enough kids, Jewish kids for a cheder, which means that we only went to a, a very orderly rabbi who uh, uh, taught us Aleph Beis and basic things from Humash. And uh, regularly, I went to elementary school, three, cla three uh, grades were uh, popular, like a, 
general, one was Catholic and the fifth was Protestant. And it was my end of my education, I was 10 years old, when I had to start wearing a yellow star. Property was confiscated, two years later deportation started. So the Germans and had... Uh, um, it was no tab, Germans. No. There were no Germans. Slovak government became fascist government, really? loyal to Germany. And 1942, when I was 12 years old, already uh, paid, the only country in the world that paid 500 Deutschmarks, about $60 for every Jew uh, taken to out of the country uh, to be slaughtered. Eventually we didn't know where we were going because it was all deceit. Uh, they told us to go to work and first of all young people went and then uh, the whole families and we were receiving postcards saying it's wonderful here join us and until a postcard arrived and people came to my father because uh, they, he spoke so many languages and my mother too and it was something scribbled there and couldn't understand it, decipher it. He turned it upside down and it was in Hebrew saying, lot of, no good. Yeah, really. And uh, we started searching and found out eventually uh, it saved my life because eventually we found out what was going on there. Were you in a concentration camp? No, I have never been in concentration camp because my I mother called that. us in the worst times uh, and said we have a choice to die voluntarily in peace rather than go there where our enemies are sending us in sealed cattle cars. It is absolutely no possibility that it's something good. At the end of it, she re read Mein Kampf, still in Palestine, and uh, Mein Kampf very clearly said that Jews in competition with German race should be annihilated so the German race can take over the world. And uh, she believed it, even if all politicians and many people who were not as pessimistic or as mm -hmm. realistic, mm -hmm. uh, who said, you know, politicians are talking, it's an exaggeration, you know, it naturally has to get some anti semites on his side, that's why he's talking so tough. Uh, in Palestine, Jews believed exactly how it was written and intended and it we came through that's why we said we would rather be shot mm -hmm. rather than walk into those cattle cars so and we did everything possible not to so be, so you your education stopped at age 10 yes and then to age 15 yes and then when did you go to palestine to join your mother or your parents they were married there and came back to slovakia Okay. To their parents, I didn't go there. Okay. I went there after. So, after. so how did you escape being sent to a concentration camp? And how uh, did you survive three yes, years? Yes. First year, there was that year when deportations were going on. Somebody, there were some Jews who had a permission to stay. It was so called exception. Uh, regular Jewish star, yellow star, was about four inches. That one was only two inches wide and blue, not yellow, uh, bluish. And, with a, and those were so-called economic Jews, which means that a lot of factories or a lot of uh, enterprises and uh, uh, like a pharmacist, a pharmacist without uh, uh, whom uh, probably half of the population might have might have died. They kept them, they didn't deport them. Which means that those people stayed... Professionals, you mean like professionals yeah, and they because wanted to keep around. Yes, professionals and who had to teach uh, the new owners of their property how to run, how to run it. And because the president of the country was a Catholic priest and everything was around, kept civilized and simply the decorum was normal, life went on normally. Catholic and Protestant ministers, priests and ministers refused to bury a dead Jew and those people who were still there, about 15,000 left 
out of about 80,000, uh, almost 100, depending because m border moves, nobody knows exactly the right number. And uh, uh, those, uh, somebody had to bury those Jews, and there were a few Jewish kids left. Uh, those people who were still exempt uh, had, had to be kept. They didn't want uh, us to run around, which means that we made, they made, they ordered us to make a Jewish school. They, there were mm -hmm. only four kids in that school, but still uh, it saved us because my mother was a teacher in the Jewish school and had an accept, exempt uh, status. My father was in charge of burying. My brother and I were digging graves and putting the dead bodies in the ground and so on, which means that the we, our whole family was like temporary except, and we survived the year of 1942. Even if we, when we saw cattle cars on the railroad waiting and no cattle, we knew that it was for Jews and we ran away. But we didn't trust them. But still we have survived 42. 43, Germans started losing the war and Slovaks started thinking, you know, about to be aligned with German was not such a good metzia, such a bargain. And uh, they started thinking about it and also some, you know, underground work and they were scared or bribed and so on. And transportations didn't, re they didn't renew. At 43 we survived, F 44 was an uprising, Slovak uprising. German army took over Slovakia. Uh, Red Army was already in Poland and Ukraine. And we ran into the forest and stayed for seven months. Uh, survived the whole winter. Seven months, 200 days How do you under the ground. A winter well, that's without that, protection. And I want to know which forest is this? It was about nine kilometers, about six miles from Dolny Kubin, where I was born. We just ran because when the German army took over, it was an uprising, Slovak uprising. They came and sh were shooting uh, uh, machine guns and mortars in front of them. And were sh whatever, whatever moved and whoever moved was, was killed. Which means that not only Jews, but everybody ran to those mountains and to those smaller villages because they uh, followed uh, main roads. We ran with all those populations, removed the yellow star and said we are refugees, bombed out. And they were so, a few weeks later, uh, Gestapo announced that everything is okay, come back. And who was not political uh, or Jewish came back. But a lot of Jews also came back because they, put a huge poster saying, Jews, you have survived so far, don't worry, you are safe, come home. When they came home, they took them naturally to this, this camps and or, or those, this marches, and very few of them survived, if at all. And uh, this is how we remained in that forest for 200 days, uh, and two months before, Red Army took over the area uh, even in that forest fighting man-to-man -man battles, uh, two months before we were robbed and lined up to be shot by Ukrainian partisans who were parachuted to fight the Nazis. They didn't like Jews either. We were easy prey. They found us in a forest. We were not scared of them and this is how, that's why we were not careful enough and, and uh, this was the toughest thing because they took over all the food we, we had, little food we had, those berries I collected from the bushes, uh, mushrooms, and they took our blankets. They even stripped uh, uh, my, my grandfather was their father and brother. Uh, and uh, they stripped them I, when I came, I, I ran away. I was very swift and very strong very small. I ran away and came to run to the partisans and asked them for a gun that I would follow those murderers of my family because they were shooting after me. I was sure that they finished. They finished us. They finished all of them. The Ukrainians? The Ukrainians. They, they yeah. killed your grandfather? Father. They did not kill them. And I, I believe they did because they said, what is your last wish? 
And my grandfather and father said, Can you, would you let us pray? No. They took film with them. Uh, and they put film on and tell us and said, okay, shoot. And mother, ma my mother shouting, why would you kill us? Don't shoot. And my father, ah, oh, don't torture us, just go and shoot. Shoot, don't, don't, don't make it, you know. Yeah. And my mother again, and it was like a panic and they lifted the weapons. I r was able to run away. All of them slid back on ice into like a, it was like a slope mm -hmm. on both sides. And I ran to the village, as I said, you know, to ask for a gun that I would follow them and shoot them. And then actually the partisan, my friend, was laughing at me, so I, I, I crawled back to the forest to, to bury them, and they were alive, but, but stripped, you know, in underwear, in snow. Right. Uh, they, each of us ran with a backpack and blanket, and backpack, blanket, they took everything. They believed it was money in it or gold or something. Anyway, this was a toughest part because two months to survive in a hole, but that hole that dug out. Uh, it's the area is full of was full of uh, uh, mineral water, warm mineral water. That night, a, a little spring erupted in that cave, in that built-in dugout shelter and warmed up the area and it smelled like rotten eggs, in, like in spa. Sulfur, yeah. So yeah. yeah. Like sulfur spas. It, it's yeah. here. And that kept us alive for two months because it, it, I usually say if I were a Catholic I would be saint today because it was a total and absolute miracle. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, it happened, came in the right moment and if it didn't come I wouldn't have been talking to you. Now there was a movie made several years ago called Defiance. Is this different from what that movie was based on or what do you not know about the movie Defiance? I, I, I saw the movie, you know, the guy who plays the main role he lives very close by Kingston. Uh, it, that movie showed about 1,500 Jews who went to the forest, made a community, they were armed, and they resisted defiance, and they uh, survived a uh, few months in under terrible conditions, but still uh, they were uh, like self-sufficient somehow. So it was we a different forest. It was a different forest. Oh, this, no, this this the defiance was in in uh, Ukraine or okay. Belarus no, 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 somewhere. No, no. Belarus. I see. No, it was. But here we were six people yeah, in wow. a very tiny area. We were able to dug uh, dug out almost oh, with okay. our finger fingernails. Uh, yeah. For a few days, we, we got a little tool to help us. We camouflaged it, believing, because we already heard c cannons and bombardment from Poland. They were already in the Krakow area, very close by, which was uh, probably 50 miles. And uh, just uh, didn't believe that we have to stay. Then September, October, November, mm -hmm. fell, snow fell in November. Uh, December, January, February, March, April, and then only. You were only free in April 1945. That was yes. just a few mm. weeks before the end of the war. That's correct. Very few days, practically. They, they were. But was I don't still understand. How did you survive so all the months? What did you eat? Over here? Almost nothing. Well, he ate mushrooms and berries. And berries. No, I went at night. Uh, it was winter, snow. Though? It was snow. Yeah. And. You know, you know those, those, those bushes yeah. with berries on them, some of them were poisonous, I knew which ones. I was able to collect because they froze on bushes and stayed there. I collected them, but as I walked through the forest, I had to put snow into my footsteps so that nobody would follow me. If they caught me, they would not see where I came from, yeah, right. which means that it took a, a very dark night and this is how I, after the war, I had tuberculosis. I had two big holes in my lungs because we practically ate nothing and it was yeah, bark and grass and, you know, under the snow, some vegetation. You kept and warm enough? It was snow. warm there because it was that, that spring. spring. And the Germans were never looking for you? Oh, they were looking every day, a few times. Really? All right. Yeah. Tell us about that. 
uh, they were sending I, I, I tell you a story after the war that parties and a friend uh, who, who he didn't give me the gun he, uh, he met me a few weeks or months later and he said Tibor I saved your life and I said you didn't give me the gun you saved <laughs> me nothing you didn't me. and he said I tell you tell you why I, how I saved your life we, it, you know, it was very high mountains and the roads were in the middle of the valley and from both sides were those uh, like steep uh, forests and the partisans were waiting for cars going there and they saw a black car so looked like an official they shot, shot them, shot the people and they were, uh, I don't know if by on purpose or, or, or by accident they were Gestapo people they, they killed and they took naturally all documents from their pockets and in one of those uh, uh, documents it was a map uh, of the area and it was a little X on one spot with our name on it and it was in that forest where we were hiding somehow they found out or somebody b betrayed us and he said if I did not shoot the guy with that map it must have been fresh mark on it <laughs> they would have found you uh, but any looking for you but regardless of it they were coming on horses because it was very very difficult uh, in terms of that we were yeah. chosen we have chosen as the area my brother was a genius artist and he was a really a thinker uh, which I never met since a person like that uh, and uh, he sought it out already in 1943 and 4 uh, they took everything from us. Anybody can walk into our apartment and take whatever they want. It was nothing le left, but we made fire, and it was charcoal in the uh, uh, left in the f in the stove, and on the wall he drove exactly as we would build that shelter. As we ran away and the Germans came, they took that apartment and they could see <laughs> the shelter design like removing the soil, you know, cutting out the triangle, mm -hmm. covering it with branches, supporting it, you know, like with pillars and m camouflaging it. They saw exactly as it means they knew that we vanished. They knew where we vanished because simply we were, the people were talking and, and they paid a lot of money, huge amount of money to catch us. They were mad, which means they were sending to that forest one after the other and they were going on horses shouting help 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 you know in Slovak language and uh, there were some people look, uh, who looked and they shot them and we never we knew that the trick that it was a trick and we never <laughs> uh, fell for it mm. but it took it took incredible so good luck they near you though that was one of the things they really were near you they were sometimes absolutely near and my mother was very psychic she knew he, she mm -hmm. communicated with her parents who were killed in in Op Opole as they took them to Opole Sobibor some, somewhere there and her mother she had a dream and 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 said I, I just dreamt of we were whispering so that nobody could hear you know in case mm -hmm. they would walk walk in the forest and she said, I saw my mother doing this here in front of our shelter. The morning we saw a horse shoe, you know, on snow, mm. few yards from, from it because it was like in a steep and it was a little wow. creek in the middle. So, so what, was, that we what did this could mean? And, and as if she was protecting us, pushing oh. those horsemen away, away, oh. away from, from us, protecting us. And uh, I inherited it, and I was teaching Kabbalah yeah. uh, because uh, you know it, I couldn't explain it. And then I spent 20 years in a communist country; it was forbidden science. Uh, then we escaped to you know send me to Cuba to fix Fidel Castro's glass factories, which I did in six weeks because they to told me you know three weeks we c nobody could fix it if you don't fix it in six weeks. They said, Compañero Spizo. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I spoke oh, the yeah. language. Machete is sugarcane. I, I fixed it in six weeks. The f first factory works, worked like charm. 
and, and in a few weeks, all three of them uh, produce products. So let me ask you, yes. when, you're in, uh, when you were getting out of the forest, who left with you? Was it your grandfather, your father, your brother, did your mother, I mean, did they all, did everyone who came into the forest with you, did they all leave with you? Yes. Uh, it, was, it was in April, S snow started melting when we, first of all, it was, f uh, the army was fighting in that forest, man-to-man -man battles five times, and I tell you why. First they uh, came, <coughs> and you know, uh, the war makes a terrible noise. There, there are cannons and <coughs> machine guns, and and finally we can hear uh, those uh, automatic weapons and even hand pistols close by. And they even the big noise went from the right hand side to the left hand side, and we somehow believed that it was over, but we didn't come out. Suddenly. We didn't have any watch, and it, we didn't know if it was day or night. You know, it was underground, little light, no light at all, but a little light coming from a, a hollow stamp. We put like for breathe to breathe through it, and then the noise came from the left to the right again, and it repeated itself five times, and yeah, then it was a total forest. silence. We f we found out why because it was a distillery. You know, it was no industry in those mountains but they made slivovitz out of plums <laughs> it was the only fruit which would <laughs> you know right. like like uh, uh, apples wouldn't grow there it was too cold for that and uh, the distillery the russians came to go over from the distillery got drunk <laughs> and they were taken over by a wave of of those they were romanian hungarians and, and germans uh, and they discovered the distillery, got drunk, and the Russian came and killed them. Nah. And this is how, why it was such a, a torture for. Yeah, yeah, we don't know how many it. days, <laughs> how many days it took, <laughs> but it was a <laughs> battle. A battle, and finally it was total silence. But we didn't dare. And suddenly we heard some voices. Species, we know you are somewhere here. Mm -hmm. War is over. Come out. But we had very good experience. What? Go ahead. We had very good experience uh, with, uh, you know, like the deceit that they came yeah. to a forest and said war is over and then, then yeah. we stick out our heads and right. bang. Yeah. Uh, it happened, you know, dozens of times. Uh, uh, and uh, that's why we just looked. It was an opening where we crawled into that uh, shelter. It, we called it bunker on uh, all four. And we put a tree, pulled a tree in, in like little pine trees, uh, all of them, because it was so high in the mountains. And we threw it, we looked at the opposite hill, like, like uh, that slope. And there were some peasants there, and my mother recognized them. And they were, say, they, they were shouting, you are here somewhere, come out, worry, it's really over. You know, Russians are here and Germans are gone which means that we crawled out. Uh, and they, they were good people. They were those friendly people because the c country was divided into two parts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. President of the country was a Catholic priest and he surrounded himself with Catholics and Catholics took over Jewish property and didn't share it with Lutherans. And Protestants and Lutherans were hurt and were uh, badly like disadvantaged, something opposite was in Ireland. It was an economic war, not about Bible or, or some God or some angels or something, or rituals. It was about money. And uh, those Protestants were helping us. And that village where we stayed for a few weeks before we moved to the forest was Protestant. And they were uh, our friends, cl closer than, and they didn't like, it. that's why it was a partisan village. And uh, that's why they offered us bread and bread and, and water, you know, brought us something to eat and told us, you know, it's a minefield here. Partisans laid <laughs> mines and Germans uh, laid mines, which means that we have to show you the way in, in the minefield, otherwise you might, you might die today. 
and we couldn't stand because it was weeks and weeks we couldn't walk which means that we let them go we ate something they left and then a few hours later I don't know no watch no nothing we started wa walking toward the closest village and my mother in front hitting the ground in case it's a mine it would explode and at least people behind her would would which means I offered her a few times, you know, to do the, the to do the job because I was strong regardless of of, of that starvation. And uh, this is how we crawled, how we went to the village. Nothing exploded. We just found the way, and then from that little village we went back about uh, six miles to uh, Dolny Kubin, where I was born and where we came from. You must uh, have found nothing when you went back. Oh, this was, we found, we found nothing except few black and white photographs. That's what, there were no colored photographs. But I mean, the buildings must we, have been demolished we, and... It was, the house was not demolished, except that as Soviet or uh, Red Army took over, it was a Russian soldier. I went to have a look and few pieces of furniture survived. And he was cutting it, breaking it with an axe. And I said, I, I am Yevrei, I said, Jewish. I went just straight from the forest. I came here and you are breaking. There was few pieces of furniture. The furniture, it was left over. And he said, you lived in this building? I said, yeah, this is a brick building. And I said, no, what? He said, only bourgeois lived in brick buildings. <laughs> <coughs> Poor people, proletars, lived in little wooden shack. And he pulled a gun and started shooting at, at me. That I was a bourgeois and I zigzagged away. You know, I could have lost my life just to be curious. Yeah. Uh, but he was, he, he, was, he was drunk because, you know, it right. was not so easy to be a soldier. Did your, when did your grandfather and father pass away and your mother? When did they? My grandfather had eight children. My father was the oldest one. Yeah, when did they... And uh, when he came back to his... Was, uh, the town was called Trnava. Okay. Uh, he was waiting for a few weeks. Nobody came back, not a single person. My cousins, you know, right. some kids. Uh, not, none of his seven children. And a uh, few months later, he got ill and died. Wow. Uh, so that was your grandfather? It and was my grandfather. My father and mother. tried to, you know, we had to make a living. Nobody gave us anything. We, I received out of the whole suffering yeah. so far, it was about $10, pair of shoes and a bar of soap because we were all, all like clay covered skeletons. And uh, no, it was no so services, no, no social. Right, right. Really so when did you? Your parents Which means that we year. came back to, uh, but people came to see us when we washed up. How come you are not dead? <laughs> you know, like everybody, you know, touching us, you know, they believe that they see it. Um, ghost. Ghost. Now, now they say they didn't know. <laughs> How did they know <laughs> that we were supposed to be there? Anyway, it was so unbearable. I went back to school, m make exams because it was April. And school started oh, really? in September. Okay. I made exams, uh, lost one year right. because of Latin, Latin grammar. But anyway, my brother made all, all, all five, all those lost five years, and uh, my sister too. And uh, we couldn't take it anymore and moved to another city where my father became again a, a cantor, a chazan, a rabbi, whatever. Right. Uh, you know, and doing all those things. And uh, this is where I went to high school. I, my sister and br my brother and sister too. My mother became a teacher. My, my father very soon, three years later, could not, was allowed anymore, perform any Jewish... Uh, uh so your parents maybe lived, what, another five years after uh, the war? My brother... Because we got to wrap up, that's yeah. what, yeah. My, my brother lived 33 years, but he was probably killed by an isotope built in, in the desk where he worked because he was outspoken. He wanted to have free 
art in a communist country, which was a nonsensical right. uh, proposition. Uh, my mother lived 82, but my father died two years after. The war. My brother. Oh, after, after your brother. My brother oh. died. He couldn't take it anymore. Wow. And he was not, not even 60. Oh, my gosh. Okay. And, and my sister, when the country divided and fascists started walking on the streets and uh, writing on the walls, Jews go to gas chambers yeah. or something. She panicked, went to Israel, lived there 10 years. And, I had, and you know, I have, I, we could do another half hour show. I have so many things to ask you, but thank you very much, Tibor, for coming and here. Tibor, I really do appreciate it. You, you live with miracles. God was with you for sure. And uh, exactly. the main thing is you continue, like I said at the beginning, to 120 years old with good health. I right. say 150 with inflation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I called it shofar. Show good. Yes. Show far. Uh, show so, good. Yes. so far, so good. Uh, Thank you very show much. Far, show Be good. well. And that's it.